Hello, meet Ben. Ben, as we can see, this mosquito makes you sick. And now everything you think about is how you will kill it. Imagine that every person on Earth wants to do this. And now, think about what would happen if we killed all the mosquitoes in the world. We bet you will never guess. The economic growth of some African countries will accelerate by 1.3%. The appearance of glaciers on Kamkatchkan volcanoes will improve, but we will have to forget about cocoa and chocolate. Reindeer will change their migration routes and wander without any aim around the tundra. And the mosquito fish, which is logical, will die out. Now we will share with you some scientifically based thoughts on the topic. What will happen if you kill all mosquitoes? If you don't go to the toilet, you would live on Mars. Mars, and if you are sucked into a tornado. What happens if you kill all the mosquitoes? What could be the consequences of such destruction of mosquitoes? Let's start with the good news. The economic growth of some African countries will speed up by 1.3%. That is how much, according to WHO estimates, these guys lose due to malaria. The appearance of glaciers on Kamchatka volcanoes will improve. Now they are fully covered with the bodies of dead mosquitoes, so the snow that is not white, but disgustingly greyish. So if the mosquitoes will be gone, it will be white. It will reflect more sunlight and melt a little slower. How all this will affect the global climate? Probably good. Well, and now the bad news. Reindeer migration routes will change. Mosquitoes get 300 milliliters of blood in tundra on one summer day from each deer. This is about one and a half glasses. Deer do not like that. And using the wind, build their route in such a way it helps them to minimize the contact with mosquitoes. If all mosquitoes will be gone, then the deer will begin to hang around the tundra chaotically. You will forever forget the taste of chocolate. Many think mosquitoes feed on blood only. Well, they're wrong. Blood is just an additional protein for females of some species during the breeding season. And in fact, most mosquitoes feed on flower nectar. If we talk about pollination, cocoa beans, for example, are completely dependent on mosquitoes. The other bloodsuckers will start prospering. The competition between insects that bite people, ticks, horseflies, and other small things will decrease due to the absence of mosquitoes. So the other creatures that feed on your blood will start reproducing actively. Some animals will simply die. If the mosquitoes will be gone, the first one to suffer will be the Gambusia fish. The only food for this fish is mosquito lava. Therefore, fish are specifically bred in some areas where malaria gets out of control. But if there are no mosquitoes, there is no malaria, and the poor fish is in no need. Some other creatures will be able to adapt and switch to other food, but not everyone will cope with it. Dozens of species of creatures will die. Frogs will learn to live without mosquitoes, switching to butterflies and flies. Bats will start catching more moths. Many plants will die. In some reservoirs, plants that receive fertilizers due to the activity of mosquito larva will disappear. And as usual, humanity will notice the disappearance of entire plant species only when it is already too late. And finally, after killing all mosquitoes, we will bring closer the day when the planet dies. What will happen if you don't go to the toilet for a very long time? It is unlikely that you knew about this, but the bladder can accumulate half a litre of fluid before the feeling hits. The cylindrical sphincters in the bladder are compressing tightly to prevent urine from seeping through the urethra. But everything works fine until you keep them tense too often and for too long. If you do so, you may encounter such sad consequences as incontinence and increased risk of getting an infection. Also, you may encounter a problem when you are unable to empty the bladder. And when the waste products are constantly in your bladder, it will become a real breeding ground for bacteria, which undoubtedly increase your risk of urine and retract diseases. In the worst case, a rupture of the bladder can occur. Then you will die. What will happen to a man if he would live on Mars? Everyone knows that we plan to terraform Mars and possibly move to the Red Planet in the future. But the most important thing is that we do not understand the evolutionary consequences for our bodies if we will move to the Red Planet. How life on Mars will change us. 
we'll completely lose the immune system. In a sterile environment without the presence of microorganisms, there's no need for the body's ability to fight against pathogens. Of course, this situation will have some flaws. In this case, reproduction between the Martians and Earthlings will become impossible. If Martians do not have an immune system, such contact may be fatal for them. Thus, it will limit the interaction and mixing of the two populations. We will become wide-boned. The bones of people living on Mars will become wider, adapting to the effects of lowered Martian gravity. Microgravity will also make our bones more fragile, which in turn will lead to serious problems with childbearing, as women's pelvic bones will break like matches. We will become myopic. Despite the large Martian open spaces, people will have to live in rather tight and compact housing conditions, which in turn will lead to the development of myopia. Our bodies will develop new pigments. The inhabitants of the red planet will be exposed to 5,000 times stronger doses of radiation daily than during ordinary life on Earth. This will lead to severe outbreaks of cancer. Here on Earth, the human body uses melanin to protect itself from the ultraviolet rays. Over time, the inhabitants of Mars may develop a completely different pigment, which will increase their protection against radiation. Our respiratory and circulatory systems will change. This will happen because our body will have to use the available oxygen more efficiently. Such mutations are already happening to people that live in the Tibetan Plateau, where the oxygen content is 40% lower than its concentration at sea level. In response to this, the Tibetan organism developed a denser network of capillaries for more efficient blood circulation. Besides, the body can adapt by expanding blood vessels to supply oxygen to the muscles more efficiently. What happens if you are pulled into a tornado? The air rotates counterclockwise inside the tornado, forming strong turbulence, the speed of which reaches 100 to 200 meters per second. The funnel creates an area of reduced pressure inside, sucking everything that stands in its way into it. The difference in external and internal pressure is so high that the objects or living creatures that are sucked into the giant funnel simply get torn to pieces. If you are sucked into the funnel, then a flow velocity exceeding 55 meters a second will lift you above the ground and throw you down in the so-called dispersion zone from a height of many kilometers. Sometimes, downdraft velocity is added to the freefall velocity. In such cases, the victim's body is flattened by a terrible blow, as if under pressure. But sometimes, it happens that a tornado lifting a person begins to weaken when the velocity of the ascending flows becomes less than 55 meters a second and decreases gradually. While the tornado itself does not break in the middle, a person that is sucked into it can get down to the ground quite smoothly. Being curious is wonderful, but being curious doesn't mean being stupid. You have to admit, it's even more wonderful to know beforehand what your actions may lead to. But now you know a lot more. Share this video with your friends, thumbs up, and subscribe. Click on the bell button to be the first to see new videos. We still have a lot of amazing tips for you.